Hello there. Thanks for tuning in to my week six update. I didn't really intend on making a video this week, but I've been having some troubles, so I decided that I would make a video and hold myself accountable. Um, maybe I'll make a video every two weeks rather than once a month, which is what I planned. Um, so things aren't going bad. I'm still losing weight. So on that end, things are fine. Um, what I have been having a problem with that's bothering me is my head hunger. Um, of course, I knew it wasn't going to go away with the surgery, and it's something I've been working on for the last three years. And for those of you that don't know what head hunger is, that's kind of just when you want to eat, but you're not physically hungry. So um, I have eaten a couple times when I wasn't hungry, and that bothers me a little bit because, I don't know, because I got the surgery, and um, I was hoping not to do that anymore. But I suppose if you've been doing something for nearly two, two decades, it's not going to go away overnight. But um, anyways, so for week five, which was last week, I lost another 2.5 pounds. Um, so I was down to 193. During that week, I was able to start eating pureed and mushy foods. And um, there was probably the second or third day I ate more than I should have. Um, partially not knowing how big my stomach was because I just started eating food. And secondly, probably because I had a little bit of head hunger going on. So um, what had happened was I measured out my food, and I started eating it, and my stomach was not in pain but giving me some signs that it didn't really want it. And I ignored it because I figured I hadn't eaten all day. It should be empty. I should be able to eat it. And no, it hurt. <laughs> it hurt for probably, I don't know, maybe half an hour to an hour, um, but definitely not something I want to do again, which is overeat. And it wasn't very much food either. It was probably like a half a cup of um, this stuff that I've been making. It's tuna fish, refried beans, and cottage cheese mixed together, which sounds absolutely disgusting, but a quarter cup of it has like 20 grams of protein, so I'm trying to get my protein from food rather than protein drinks. Um, what else? During week five, um, or last weekend, I went camping, and of course when people are camping, they're either getting smashed or snacking all day, um, which I don't really drink and I didn't want to eat. So um, there were some times where it was a little uncomfortable, not a big deal, but I guess the feeling I have to explain it sometimes when I see other people eating is resentful. Not that I'm resentful to them and I'm not resentful to myself. I'm just kind of resentful that that can't be me. Um... It happens when I'm, there's an ice cream shop on the corner by my house. When I drive by there and I see people eating ice cream, I get resentful too because I'm like, why can they do it and I can't? Not to say that I can't eat ice cream, but why can these people eat what they want and either not gain weight or not continue eating like I do when I eat? So, um, also when I was camping, um, I was investigating. Um, I was checking out different people's bodies when they're in bathing suits, um, just because I'm curious of how my skin might look when I'm uh, when I lose weight. And the thing is, is there's a lot of people out there. I would say most people have excess skin, whether it's in their arms, their stomach, and I'm talking mainly about women. Their arms, their stomach, their thighs. Um, a lot of them look like they had had surgery and lost a bunch of weight and had flappy skin. So I'm not really too worried about what my skin is going to look like later. And to be honest, I only saw one woman on the entire river, because we were going down a river, and I saw one woman that actually looked like she belonged in a magazine. Um, all the other ones had cellulite and bumpy skin and a fat roll, so, you know, I think that we just need to learn to accept ourselves for who, are, who we are, which I have no qualms about going out in a bathing suit, um, like I said in a previous video. So, I don't know, I guess... Hopefully I keep that in mind once I have some extra skin hanging or whatever. Um, what else? Um, this week I am down one pound. So I'm down to 192. Which means I have a total weight loss of 43 pounds from the pre-op and 32 pounds from the surgery. So 32 pounds in six weeks since surgery, which I think is pretty good. The thing that bothers me is I step on the scale more than once a week, which I really shouldn't, but the last couple days I was teeter-tottering lower than what I weighed in at today, and today's my weigh-in day, so I count today. 
And it bothered me because I know I'd been eating when I wasn't hungry last night. And I think that um, as Americans or maybe other cultures too, that we have set times for breakfast, set times for lunch, set times for dinner. And when I came home, even though all I'd eaten all day was a half a cup of soup, I wanted to eat dinner even though I wasn't hungry. So I had a couple soy chips and a teeny bit of mahi-mahi fish. Knowing I wasn't hungry, but justifying to myself that it was okay to eat because I had eaten so little during the day. And then this morning I woke up and I weighed a little bit more than I had the last couple days. So not to say that it's bad because I am still losing weight and I am eating so little that I wouldn't say it's overeating. It just bothers me that I did eat when I wasn't hungry. So I guess that's what I'm battling with right now. There's been a few times when I really, really, really wanted to eat, so I just had to leave the house and do something else. Um, one day I went to a movie, another day I went to the bookstore, another day I just went to rent a movie so I had something to do here. But So I guess that's all I'm battling with now. I have not been exercising. I think I went to the gym one day and did the elliptical. Um, definitely not doing the walking like I was before. So one of these days I'll pick up on that again, but right now my main thing is you know, dealing with, oh, I just remembered, I was kind of bothered by the head hunger because I didn't know where it was coming from, and I don't know how long I've been talking, six minutes and a half, um, I was kind of bothered by the head hunger, especially yesterday because I didn't know where it was coming from, and I kind of think I might have figured out what it was from a dream I had last night, um, I dreamt, it was my first eating dream in a while, I dreamt that I was just eating, eating, eating like a maniac, like as soon as I could eat again, I would eat. And in my dream, I kept stepping on the scale, and it was like I was taunting it, like I was waiting for it to go up. And when I woke up, it reminded me of this time before when I had lost 40 pounds, and I remember one day I stepped on the scale and I had gained a pound. And it was the strangest thing. It was like I was excited that I had went up a pound, even though I wanted to lose weight. So it, to me, it just kind of represents my being in conflict with you know, wanting to be thin and healthy versus the reasons I stayed heavy and stayed fat. And I don't know how many people, you know, have really examined the reasons they stayed heavy. But to me, the fact that I got excited when I stepped on the scale and gained a pound and the fact that last night in my dream I was trying to gain weight says something to me about, you know, my unconscious desires towards, you know, what I use my fat for. I want to read a little something that I had written think about four or five years ago so for the most part I believe it's still true for me some of it maybe not so much but I'm gonna read this um, reasons I stayed fat number one to keep myself from being tempted sexually number two to keep others from being attracted to me number three to keep from being hurt and let down again number four because the role of being a fat person was imprinted on me as a child, and now it is a fundamental part of my self-image. Number five, because I know what it's like to be thin, and now that I'm fat again, I see how differently I'm regarded, and the subhuman treatment keeps me down. Uh, number six, because I am physiologically and psychologically addicted to food, and I don't know how to effectively deal with the emotions that might emerge when I try to break that addiction. Breaking addiction seems to bring a plethora of negative feelings and thought patterns into the light. Um, number seven, because I have something that contributes to my obesity and I can't let it go and move on. For example, um, when I was young, eat everything or get in trouble. Clean my plate at daycare, I could not play. Um, being denied food at a daycare provider's house. Uh, being told certain foods belong to other people and I couldn't eat them. Um, number eight. Because I have so much self-control and focus on career and educational goals, I have no one control and focus left. Number eight, because deep down I may actually believe that I do not deserve to be thin, which to me equates happiness. Um, I want to talk about that a little bit. I know that being thin does not equal happy, but I think you know somewhere in my mind I associate being thin with being happy, and some you know deep down maybe I don't deserve that I. It's not that I, I want to be sad and depressed or anything like that, and I am happy with my life, but I think in a way it's like I'm scared of really fully enjoying life to its fullest. So in some way I have to hold myself down. So uh, that one I think means a lot. And lastly, uh, because I succeed at anything else I put my mind to, but when I try to lose weight and fail, I feel like a failure. Um, so yeah.
those were the reasons I stayed fat. Like I said, I probably still agree with most of them. Um, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I just wanted to make a video and make myself more accountable. Um, I've been talking for 10 minutes, so I guess i got to end this now. Thanks so much, and have a great day. Bye.